tarpon has these giant eyes. Those eyes are there so they can see things well at night and in deep water. They have these scales that are built like armor. It's, they're almost unpenetrable by a by gaff. And the fish itself, um, to me, is, is my Moby Dick. Ever since I've been a little kid, I've been enamored with tarpon. I love all kinds of fish. I love chasing all kinds of fish species. But something about tarpon that keeps me coming back and keeps me wanting to know more and more about them. As a youngster, eight, nine years old, I met, I was already enamored with tarpon at that time and fly fishing for them. And I, I'll never forget the first time my dad took me to Isla Mirada and I walked down the docks of Bud and Mary's and the Lorelei where all these iconic guides that I'd read stories about over the years as a youngster were there. You know, and I walked by Billy Knowles and Hank Brown and Cecil Keith, all these legendary guides that were literally they kind of based the foundation of this sport. They, they took it to that next level. They were there when, when fly fishing for big tarpon became popular. So to be around that as a little kid, I looked at these like iconic figures. They were my heroes. And then throughout the years, I started my first years of guiding. I actually started fishing against these same guides that were my heroes as a kid in tournaments. Here I am, this youngster, a young teenager in a tournament captain's license fishing against these legendary heroes to me and the more I think back about it it was it was surreal I was I was young and 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 dumb enough to not let it psych me out but looking back it was probably one of the coolest experiences of my life and now after a 30-year career to some of these youngsters coming up today I'm that guy You know what, Ed? Yes, sir. I'm feeling it today, buddy. I am too, brother. That man's feeling it right there, too. He's always feeling yes, it. Yes, he is. How you doing, Joe? Oh, yeah, JoJo. I love it. He's feeling it. Man, when JoJo gives you the blessing, it's going to be Poon City, USA. It might be scary. Poon City. Soon it will be Poon. When was the last time? I met Ed at a tournament. So Ed booked me a couple days. We went fishing, and I just had a blast with the guy. His charisma, it infects you immediately and there's not a better person than that guy. A little crazy sometimes, but that's what's cool about him. You never know what's gonna come out of Ed's mouth next. You're casting dialed in? It's all right. No, you're it always needs It you're always needs improvement, cast. Rob. How about a little blessing before we go? Let's do it. Let's do it, come on. Lord, thanks for this uh, great day, and thank you for Rob and our friendship. Thank you for his family. Just bless us today as we enjoy your incredible creation. Catch a lot of fish, have a lot of laughs, and a lot of fun. We ask all these things in Christ's name, amen. 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 That's it, it's Sunday morning. It's time to preach, but here's my pulpit. Alamorada is really the mecca of where fly fishing for big tarpon began. It uh, started here in the 1850s actually with bamboo rods and silk lines. The first guy that ever recorded catching a, a big tarpon on a fly rod was on the bay side of Alamrata. The unique thing about Alamrata, the, the environment itself, is you have Florida Bay, you have the Atlantic, you have these big channels and the ecosystem of the Everglades all drains at this portion of the Keys. So the tarpon come here every year, they stage to go offshore and migrate. So you have Gulf fish coming down the west coast of Florida, you have Atlantic fish coming down the east coast, and they meet right here in the middle of the Keys in the biggest, largest numbers of, of the whole Keys, They're right here in, the, in Isla Mirada before they go offshore and spawn.
Rob, look at those are beautiful. No, look at these. I'm not, these I'm are top Rob, secret. Rob, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to look at them. <laughs> Rob, look at them. See, I got some mesh. See, Rob. <laughs> so what's up with a shirt? Ed? Rob, I know you love this shirt. Is it a proven tarpon catching no shirt? No doubt. Caught my first permit on the fly in the Bahamas with this shirt. Brand new, just tie dyed. Boom. Yes, sir. Every day I tarpon fish. And this, this is one difference between tarpon fishing to me and everything else. Every day I tarpon fish is a competition to me. It's a competition between me and the tarpon. And it's a competition between me and every other guy tarpon fishing that day because I want to practice like I play. So when a tournament comes around and it really means something, I'm going fishing just like I do every day and I'm not doing anything different. I'm still trying just as hard. Five foot lead. We're not, we're not, lead. not a big lead. Not a big lead. Okay. Okay. No problem. Five foot lead. Five right. foot lead, as soon as it hits. Okay. Gosh. You're right here. Okay, now when you do that, Rob, you're, you're relaxing the wrist, it looks like, totally. To, not moving. I'm yeah, not, what are you, what I'm are you not, feeling? I'm not stripping with my whole arm. Okay. That's the key. You can't do it fast enough okay. that way. You know, these fish are traveling these ocean flats, uh -huh. not in an eating mode. They're migrating from A to B, going from that yeah. channel to the next channel. They have love on their mind, don't they? They're, they're here they're to not, They're not thinking about no. eating food. They're here to spawn. That's right. But one thing that happens on these flats is these worms hatch out of the coral. I've Call never a, been a part of that before. We have to do that one of these days. On a crossing shot, yeah. lead doesn't eat, pick up, throw it right across his tail, okay. and you're fishing number two or number three. All right. But important also, again, as soon as that fly hits, you know, the unique thing about tarpon fishing in general, especially fly fishing for them in the Keys, is the water's clear, it's very shallow, and this fish is giant. So it's a sight fishing situation. You're actually hunting before you make a cast. You're, you're trying to find a fish. Because the water's clear, you see these fish sometimes long distances away. So the angler has time to get nervous, really nervous. And once, once you present a cast, you know, you can see the whole game, it's so visual. You gotta talk that fish into, into biting the fly, and once he eats, you hook him, he's jumping, he's going crazy, he's making these big runs, and it's all so visual. And you're throwing at a fish that's been here for millions of years. This is one of the last fish that, that is still a prehistoric giant that still lives on Earth today. It's badass. Strip that. Pop, 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 pop. Good job, Ed. Watch the line get on the reel. Did you hit him good? Yep. Right. Got him now. Woohoohoo! Good job, brother. Good job to you. What do you mean? So you don't don't put a lot of heat on him, right? Just we'll try like and get to try and get your leader in the rod tip. We'll get okay. a release on him. And then I want you to Take lay the coals to him. These, these fish are coming here to spawn, and they're using these flats, just traveling as a highway, to stage and gather before they go off and do the big movement and the spawn. So you have to talk this fish into eating that has no desire to eat. The fly has to end up in this area of awareness that's literally this big, and the fish can't know how it got there. Wind down and get it, Ed. Oh, wow, we were trying to sneak up on it, Rob. Oh, within inches. So you get this reaction bite. You gotta somehow get this little hook it's made for trout fishing, basically, sunk into this hard, bony mouth. And then once they feel the pressure, their immediate re response is to start jumping. It's the most rewarding fishing I've ever done. And I've, I've been fortunate to travel all around the world, catch 1,000-pound blue marlin, bonefish, dolphin, you name it. If my last day to fish tomorrow was it, it'd be catching big tarpon on a fly rod in Ala Mirada. I think that thing ate under your tennis shoes. <laughs> you almost had the leader in the rod tip when he ate the fly. <laughs> that was awesome. EPIC, epic. That's what it is, baby. EPIC, Rob. Release, please. Fish. Good job, bro. Now let's shake hands with him. He woke up a little bit. Yeah, he did. Good. Hey, brother. 
That's all right. He went the other way. <laughs> yeah, he did. Well done. Crap! Well done. Thanks. Let's go catch a big one. Yeah, yeah, faith, Rob, that's what it is. That's the theme, I feel it. What do you think? I don't know, what color fly you wanna put on there? You think we should put a... Match this... Uh, orange one on there? Match this outfit, it'd be nice. I don't have any of that color, Ed. <laughs> well... Man, I, I saw have... that, that fly, Rob, you perfect. You, it's just like, unbelievable. You know, you're, you're, you're in this, I call it my office. My office is 16 feet long and five feet wide. You and another guy for 10, 11, 12 hours a day, sometimes for eight, 10 days in a row. Every hour, every minute you're fishing is not necessarily action packed with fish. There may be two, three, four hours goes by and nothing's happening. And all of a sudden, Ed will just burst out and I mean, it, it, he just blind. Arr, arr, arr. Bulldog flippers. Bulldog Clippers, Rob, when you go to your local tackle store, just start barking. Bulldog Clippers. And Rob, too, I like the sound of the sounds of tarpon fishing, like boosh. Yeah. All that, you know. <laughs> There's no telling what's coming out of Ed. And that's another thing I love about being with him. He's just fun, fun guy to be with, whether the, the fishing's great or not, he's a cool dude to hang out with. I guess a tarpon, tarpon is deeper, isn't it? Boop, yeah. boop, 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 boop. Normal day of tarpon fishing. I often start the day at the gym, 4.30. Work out for an hour, eat breakfast, come back, prep the boat, get ice in the cooler, get the flies that I tied the night before, because every day I'm trying a new fly. Go splash the boat, look at the weather, look at the tides, make a decision on which way to go, south or north, and then the day begins and you kind of feed off of that first decision. It starts wearing on you, you're like, oh man, I need a day off. And you get one day off and you can't wait to get out there again and do it again. So you're fishing fish. Yeah, okay. You're gonna recast. Yep. Okay. You see, you see how, how that came out of water? Yeah, what'd you w do? Watch that versus... Yeah. I think one of the most rewarding things for a guide, you know, that's been doing this a long time, that's good. He's gonna have repeat customers. And you become family with these guys. They are, they're no longer a client you know, relationship. It could be the guy that started Apple Computers, or it could be a janitor at a high school. The fish doesn't care where they came from or what their bank account is. I do it every day. Most guides do it a lot every day. We see hundreds or thousands of fish a year. This guy may only do it for a week. And he lives for that week 365 days a year. He can't, when, it, when his last day with you, this tarpon season's over, he can't wait till the first day of the next year. Too fast. Too fast. Go up, go up and down, wait a second, then do it. There, that's it. Yes! You might, when Rob and I fish next time, the guy's gonna be like, I can't hear it, Ed. Are you even casting? <laughs> <laughs> and it's pretty cool to have an impact on somebody's life that way. There's a sign in North Carolina where a lot of fighter jets land. And the sign reads, pardon the noise. That's the sound of freedom. I love that. Is that good? That's good. Start throwing it. Okay. That line. A little bit right. A little bit right. Right there. Drop that. Don't shoot it. Whoa. Whoa. Trip it, trip fast. Pop, 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 pop. A little more left than that. Trip it. Keep tripping. Keep tripping. Hit him, hit him, hit. Watch the line get on the reel, bro. Awesome. Watch job. the fly line. Awesome. Watch that fly line. My man, Robbie. Rob, you gotta give pretty, me some love on that. That was a pretty good job keeping your composure. Oh, I try, Rob, but I'll 
You know, I'll choke with the best. Oh, wow. Oh, no, 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 no. Poon Nation. Let's go up here and get the leader. Let's get the leader. Come on now. The Pooner module has landed. Right up on the front, Ed. Got it. Got it? Yep. Good job, buddy. And let's shake hands with him. He's with some other fish still. Yep. There we go. Oh. That's a nice fish. Yes, man. that's a nice fish, son. As someone driving the boat, you're you're trying to keep the angler's fly line in the rod. Yeah, because any any anytime you get more line out than that, there's so much stretch. Yep. The pressure that you're trying to apply is not getting applied to the fish. Interesting. Pulling, 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 and when he surges, oh yeah. Talk to me, Poon, we talk want, to we me. We want to see him jump, because that's yes. going to get him tired quicker. That's right. A lot of people, as they pump the fish back, like you're doing here, yeah. when they go to wind, they drop the tip and then reel, and that, that relieves the pressure off the fish. You're, you're actually winding the same pressure down as you wind. Guess who taught me that? Rob Fordyce. Oh yeah. That was perfect. That was perfect the way you gave me a tip. The two most common places these <clears throat> fish are lost are at the beginning when you're clearing. Okay. You know, you get wrapped up on your reel like you did right. when you cleared it. Or as we get ready to land this fish yes. and grab him, that's the point where he's the closest to the boat. All right. It's the least amount of fly line out of your tip. Okay. So it's the least amount of stretch. Huh. Kind of pull right here. That's it. I'm trying to get his head up, right? Keep his head trying up. Trying to get his head up. But as you get his head up, then go a little lower so you're pulling right down his body, like, just like that. Okay. See how you backed him up there? Yep. As soon as you change that rod yes, angle? Yes, that's right. That's right. That's right. I, I would lead my success over a 30-year career to one thing and never been satisfied with my knowledge of the game. I'm trying to better myself. I've never been satisfied with what I know about whatever species I'm chasing that day. And tarpon, I'm even to the fullest extent that way. You don't get, get even close to reaching your fullest extent of understanding something or being good at something until you've done it 10,000 hours. I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of hours I got tarpon fishing, but it's a lot more than 10,000. Give me slack, give me slack. The fly came out, so it's not okay, me. Okay, okay. <sighs> yes, sir, Voodoo. Watch the line, brother. He ain't gonna win that fight, bro. <laughs> I know that. Yeah, baby. Yeah! Great fish, Ed. Awesome! Awesome fish. Great coaching, are you kidding me? It's a heck of a nice fish. It's a heck of a nice one, brah. Nice tarpon. Woo! -hoo! Yeah, he's starting to swim good now, buddy. Keep going. Here he goes, neutral. Right, Big Daddy! Yeah, Rob! Boom! Boom! Boom. That's what I'm talking about. The bronze nut got yeah. nothing on us. Yeah. Woo! Let's go catch another one. Let's catch another one. That was good teamwork there. Woo! Yes, team. You don't always have the, the Chamber of Commerce bright, sunny, calm day. You have wind, you have clouds, you have whatever, or a mixture of both. Though the conditions weren't perfect, they were good enough that I felt like we could catch a fish or two. It doesn't always work out. Conditions may change. I should have had at least one more. I mean, the ones we missed. I, I, there's one couple of casts I would like to have back that were just terrible, but that's all right. You human. That happens, that happens, that happens, that happens. You human being you. Yeah, that happens. You got to just delete it and go on. Yeah. As you said, you can't worry about it. And listen to your guy. No, give yourself to the guy. Don't just listen. You know, there, there's, in, in, in any guide situation, wherever you are in the world, I think there's a pecking order. There's, a, there's veteran guides, there's guides that are in between being veterans and, and newbies, and then you got the rookies. And as you come along, guides earn respect from one another by the way they behave on the water and by the way they respect the veteran guides. As you gain respect from those older guys, they kind of take you in and allow you to be part of their little group and they start sharing things with you and sharing experiences and techniques. And I find myself now doing that with some of the young guides today. And it's, it's cool to pass on you know, knowledge to some of the rookie guides and, and so forth, but 
There's nothing more rewarding than to have one of your family members show a desire to do what you do and learn the game that you're, you're, you're good at and teach them and watch them prevail as an angler. It's awesome.